Hi, I'm making this video to demonstrate the issues or explain the issues I'm having with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo CPU cooler and this AMD AM4 mounting kit. A few disclaimers before I begin this is installed properly. The CPU setup is not final, it's just quickly put together to test the components I have. And I have two of these one's already installed fully, and the second one is just out here to use to explain the issues I'm having. So, quickly to go over the three issues I'm having, there's three of them. The first being that when you install, let me get something to point with, when you install the standoff that comes with the kit, uh, can you see it? This is awful, isn't it? There you go, that's better. So, that standoff screws into the motherboard backplate. What hap What the issue is, there's a gap, when you fully tighten it, there's a gap that's larger than the thickness of the motherboard. So the whole bracket before you install the cooler is loose, it's floating. So the screws move this way and the bracket itself also moves that way. That's the first, first minor issue. And the second minor issue, two minor, one major, is this screw here. When you start unscrewing this, what happens is... It doesn't unscrew, it, it unscrews the backplate itself. So I'm not really confident in the the strength of that connection. So I'll just put that back. There you go. And the third issue, which is the the main issue and the reason why I'm making this video, is that the CPU cooler twists. It, it's not clamps properly. Well, it's, I'm guessing this is design rather than installation. So see how loose that is. And it's only gone a bit stiff is because of the, the CPU compound, the thermal compound drying out. When I first installed this, which was probably early on in the day, I don't know how many hours ago, it was really loose. And what I did was I pushed down on this. And don't be worried about that coming loose. I've tightened it and it's the same issue. So what happens is this twists a lot more than what you see here. And right now, the most... the Mitigating factor is the, the friction of the compound itself, it's not the pressure applied by the mounting kit. I'm going to quickly pause the video just to highlight more, more uh, to explain further, but from this point I've explained all the main parts I want to discuss. So to, to go over this, this comes with these standoffs here, and obviously this is the cross bracket. I didn't know that there was a square bracket. When I asked Cooler Master for a for the bracket, well, they they linked me this. They never explained it. There's another version, which I'm glad I've got this anyway, because I want the cross bracket. The cross bracket enables you to install the CPU cooler in this orientation. The square bracket, I'm just calling it the square bracket. I'm not I'm not sure if that's the proper name. You install only in this orientation. So the air has to go up or down. You can't go out to the side of the the case which is I guess this is more traditional setup but I think the square bracket actually doesn't have this clamping issue and the instructions are quite simple if I can get it to focus what you do first is you take off the existing screws and the existing motherboard brackets the plastic brackets and you install these standoffs here what I find interesting in this installation is you use the existing motherboard backplate that comes with the motherboard you don't use one that comes in the box. Nothing comes in the box. There's just, it's just these things here. So, if you focus that. So maybe that's causing the issue. And I'm used to Cooler Master giving me a backplate, so that's I thought it's a point of interest. What happens is these screws go into the this standoffs go go into the backplate, and it doesn't clamp onto the motherboard. It just stops and just like I said before, it's in goes up and down, it's loose. And what else do I want to mention? Yep, yep. Uh, this is a, If I'm not sure if it's important, but I'm just gonna cover all my bases. This motherboard is a ASUS, I think? MSI, sorry. MSI A320M Pro VD Plus AM4 motherboard, and the CPU I have is a 
Ryzen 7. Um, it's probably got nothing, nothing to do with the issue because all the CPU sizes in the CPU bucket should be the same, so that shouldn't cause anything. <coughs> Sorry about that. And the uh, the thermal compound I used was the uh, what is it? High performance thermal compound kit. So once again, proven must stay itself. And what happened is when I first installed it, it didn't squeeze it out all the way. I had to push it. I had to actually manually push it in, and that would actually move the CPU further to the CPU socket. No, sorry, the CPU itself. So just just by pushing it and squeezing out more CPU paste, which I'm not, I haven't recorded, just demonstrates the fact that the clamping force isn't making the best, isn't the best application. So the issue that the main, the issue that this issue causes to to word it poorly is that the there's a thick amount of CPU paste. CPU thermal compound between the CPU and the heatsink itself, which will minimize a heat transfer. You don't want that. You don't want your CPU to run as not as cool as it could because you've got all the components you paid for it, and now you're not using it properly. Well, it's not. I wouldn't call it your fault. I'll call it a design issue. And the reason why I made this uh, video is to explain, or just to. Because I haven't seen any issues, I, I uh, went to YouTube, couldn't find anyone explaining this kind of issue that I had. And it's just to make sure people out there understand that this, I don't, that personally I don't believe this to be the best solution for a, a cooler for AM4. AM3 is fine, it's perfect, it's, it's one of the best prices out there, it does the job, for, but for AM4, I think it's cutting too many corners. And I guess the, f the fact that this was taught after, this was designed after this was made, probably has got to, got something to do with that issue and the second reason I made this video is to link it to Cooler Master hopefully they can help me out I'm not sure what they can do maybe they can give me maybe there's an issue with the bracket itself it's a it's a defect which I doubt got to here and I can't be bothered trying the second one I don't see they look identical and maybe they can give me a replacement cooler I doubt they're gonna do that because I don't have the receipt for this I just have the receipt for the bracket so I wanted to make this a 7 minute video, if if it was too long you could have stopped watching at the point I paused that, just try to explain the main parts quick, thank you for watching.